Hello everyone, and welcome to another live stream. Uh, there's no, there we go. Now we have video. How are you doing? What's the intro song? It's a remix of RCT Gentle Style, RCT2 Gentle Style, made by a friend of mine. It's on my channel, it's linked in the description of all my videos. Um, so you can find it easily. How are you all doing? Good afternoon, Kerry. Welcome, welcome. Hi there, Marcel. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. There's some interesting things today. I've been working on a video. Um, I've been doing well in GeoGuessr again. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good day today. I did laundry. Now, that's exciting. <laughs> Gustavo Fring likes you. Who's that? Did you beat your personal best again? Yes, I actually beat my personal best before the video went live two days ago. Um, so on su on Sunday I live streamed GeoGuessr, and I managed to get a 3:46, which was a personal best, and two seconds behind the personal best of a friend of mine, who I really wanted to beat. 
so I continue trying and on Monday at like 2 33 p.m. a few hours before the video went live I got a 307 <laughs> uh, it was quite a fast time um, I'll show you it I had that set up it's this one first round 15 seconds because it was next to our government uh, which I recognized and then it was easy because there's a bit of water there which you know makes it all very easy second round was on a small road um, but when I went down this way I went into Omen and I know where Omen is and I was able to find it um, Although I wasted a bit of time trying to read the name on this bus stop, which gave me no information. The other one was better in terms of distance. Yeah, but I don't care about distance as long as, it is, as, as, long as I get 5,000 points. Um, this one was over a minute. Then the third one was near Nijmegen. Once again, near a sign that says you're going into the city. That makes it a lot easier. Fourth one was really fast. It was a highway exit. All our highway exits are numbered and the highways are numbered. So that was easy. And the last one was also very fast. Was uh, right in a tunnel below a highway, which once again made it a bit easier. So, you know, I was in the tunnel and I knew I was next to De Lutte. So then it's either just this one or that one. And then it's easy to find which. Um, so that's how that works. And this also means that now I'm actually going for the world record. The next time I do a GeoGuessr stream, it won't be called speedrun attempt. It will be called world record attempt. Because if I take a look... I'm literally the fourth fastest person on earth right now, on the Netherlands. Every now and then a fake time appears here, like today, earlier today there was a 40 second time, no a 20 second time, um, but they had um, like zero meters within four seconds on every location, so I just clearly cheated. But yeah, the, the uh, world record is 221 and my personal best is 307. So yeah, that should definitely be possible at some point. I've had, like, paces of three good rounds. Um, that would get me under the world record. So it could happen any time if I play. And I record all my attempts now. Not always with live commentary, but I always record the video. <laughs> so now that that's over, uh, we're also going to use... Now that we've talked about that. This. Now... You, you might be familiar with the right price manager, right? That automatically sets the right prices. Well, this is the same, but better. Um, it's called the Open RCT2 Price Manager because it's not limited to rights. It's basically all the functionality of the old one with extra functionality added in. Damn, this really sounds like an advertisement, does it? Like one on TV. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll link it. Um, it'll also be in the link of the vault when this goes up on the second channel. Um, and we're going to use it. I'll pull it up when we start. And uh, yeah, it looks nice, doesn't it? Lots of info. Like you can do stalls. You can do uh, it does entry prices. It can make transport rice free. It can do everything the old one did. So it's the same but better. And the last thing I want to share before we start... Is this. So someone made a drawing of me. Um, uh, because they needed to draw their internet hero for school. Not only is it of course very flattering that I'm their internet hero. But the drawing is also really good. Like. It is great. So. Thank you very much Jeroen Erb. I think I've seen you in the Twitch chat before. So if you see him later, um, do tell him 
if I miss his name, if I don't tell him myself, that this is great. Because it is really cool. It's Jesus, pretty much. People call me RCT Jesus. <laughs> Although I do think Jesus was a little bit more fit than I am. <laughs> anyway. Let's get back into the game. So, we're going to do Millennium Mines today. No specific reason. It's not like a difficult goal or anything. We can probably, like, quintuple the goal if we try. So, okay, uh, let's go scaling factor one and a half. Time to start a religion with that portrait. You could make a religion out of this. Ten points for anyone who gets that reference. So this is Millennium Mines. I love this scenario. I was always so impressed by the train that goes like underground and it looks so complex. And this is such nice scenery. It's, I absolutely love it. So let's build. We're actually in a roller coaster tycoon one scenario, so that's going to be interesting. With what the right price manager does. Okay, we're going to use the same kind of queue line style. There we go. Wasn't that the entire entire history of the world? I guess yes, it was. So. The new ride price manager, or ride, or just price manager, I suppose, is this one. You have enable ride price management. Now you have an option to make transport rides free, which is useful because guests will always go on free transport rides. Um, enable good value pricing, which is just a fourth of the maximum. Enable lazy tax. Now the previous one only went up to 50%. Um, can you do negative lag? No, that wouldn't work. Ooh, it is a bit laggy if you change this, because it immediately recalculates. You, you can see the lag spikes. But yeah, this goes up to 100%, which would just make them all entirely free. The previous one only went up to 50%, but we're not going to use it. We're going to exploit the hell out of this today. Limit prices to... This is also fun. You can limit the prices to... What's the limit? <laughs> this also just makes it free. Limit the prices to nothing. Oh, thank you for the 19 months one of these mics and the 8 months major geeks. Why did that not give an alarm? Did did you guys get a notification for that? Oh, I do get for, I do get it for those two months. Thank you, Conwolf. Guys did. Okay, then I just missed it for some reason. Even though I should get the sound. But yeah, you can change the prices, price the, the limit price. You can also go above 20. Uh, I'll just delete the limit. And then enable shop price management. So if you've watched my video about shop prices, you will know that you can charge... Ooh, only two shops. Well, we're starting with immediately another one. So that's interesting. Um... You will know that, like, this is 150, and it's just changed to 160, because that's the maximum you can charge, and I assume that this will change with weather, um, because um, it different weather types, like rain or no rain or hot and cold, uh, it you can charge different things for some shop items, so. You don't get, you don't earn much more money by doing this. A lot of exploitation for scenario with no ATM. Oh yeah, about that. Uh, there we go. I have an ATM now. Let's place it. Oh, we just, hang on, we just unlocked the drink stall. Hang on, where was the drink stall before? Wait, what? Huh? We didn't unlock it. Right? Wait, we did. Hang on. We... There's some kind of bug here. Because we had a 
food or drink stall or shop or whatever in research but now we don't it's finished but it's not actually finished it also shouldn't be finished this quickly it should be finished on the 30th or the 31st of march not the 21th uh hang on what happens if i add a ride again let's add something innocent like a second toilet type if we just unlock anything okay well the extra toilet of course i don't actually know if i think these were already there let's see what happens when uh this changes to some kind of category and then we add a ride from that category that's interesting why is it was it always called cash machine instead of atm um maybe that depends on english versus or british versus american i don't know i i use them interchangeably i think i say cash machine more though anyway let's see what else this thing can do the right there uh, the price manager it can you can decide whether it overcharges for umbrellas aka just the 20 thing the 20 euro thing always only when it rains or never i do always enable toilet price management so you can charge it for the toilets let's do 30. enable park fee management bound, bound by initial guest cash so this will automatically um, calculate the maximum park fee that you can charge. And you can either set it to the minimum that the guest spawns with. The average or the maximum. I always do minimum. That's what I recommend. That will get you the most money. There are like hyper specific situations where you might not want to do that. When you want to charge more. But that's too specific. Um, and in RCT1 you can charge you for rides, park entry or both. Um, and I'm going to do only rides here. So I assume this one will be free. Yes. So what if I set it to park entry? Will it change this? Not yet. Oh and it also works for multiplayer. Which the previous one apparently didn't. Thank you for the follow. Slacks Vice. And I'll have a good drink of water. And thank you for the six months. Xak. Oh, there we go. It's been upgraded now. Emission price 140. Also because this one's broken down. Uh, I believe it might... No, it should kind of be broken. No, I'm not sure if it does actually. Um, oh, it's free anyway. Oh, but that doesn't matter. Oh, it's oh, these are free? The 140. No, 140 is only a merry-go-round. I know that by heart. 140 is only a merry-go-round. So this should increase now that this thing is fixed and open again. Uh, let's see if it does. Might take a little bit. But we charge for uh, the train uh, adds now to that. The drowner guest is disabled. Wait, is it? I thought I enabled it. Uh, drowner guest, where's drowner guest? Seriously, where is Drown a Guest? Uh, I didn't actually, I didn't actually click on the delete button, did I? It would be a bit strange. I can't, I can't find it. Well, we're not gonna Drown Guest today then. I'll fix that for the next stream. Uh, thank you for the five bits, Frickelodeon. So, let's see. Yeah, 740 now. Because apparently we can charge a lot for the train. Uh, six bucks to be precise. So, uh, we're not going to do this. We're going to charge for the rides because I want to make lots of monies and stuff. Also, how laggy is this? Oh, not at all. So, if you just fast forward a lot, it doesn't automatically make it laggy. If there's nothing to update. That's good, because I hate plugins that make the game laggy. Okay, so we're doing a looping coaster. Hang on, let's check. What happens if I like give myself the air-powered coaster? 
Do we immediately get the looping coaster? Yes, we do. That worked. We didn't actually unlock it. So if you give yourself another ride of that category, you immediately research the current ride that's being researched in that category. Ha. Huh. Uh, but let's disable the things we've added. Yeah, there's a... Well, it's a new bug that needs to be fixed only if you cheat. Because obviously adding objects mid-scenario is cheating. So, now that we've gotten started, which took us all 20 minutes, let's actually build some rides. And I think this is a good spot to start. Okay, we, we don't have an info kiosk yet. Uh, I don't really need one. I don't think umbrellas... I don't know if umbrellas actually do anything. For all I know, they just get, make you money. Thank you for the follow. Makosato46. And... That's a cool drop. Scenario is probably hot and dry. Considering this is the second time we've had rain, I don't think so. But let's see. Cool and wet. It's pretty much the opposite. Um, I don't like frequent rain. Let's go to hot and dry. This stream, I don't really care about. Like, I'm not going to use all kinds of cheats, but those little things, I just want to build a cool park. Okay, and can we then go that way? Name the park. Go ahead. Hang on, looping coaster in the way. Oh, it's in the way generally. If I go one up, that should work, though. Oh, we don't have the monies. Let's increase our loan, which is always a good thing. You should always go as much into debt as possible. Life advice with Marcel. But only if you're playing Rollercoaster Tycoon. Not if you're playing the game of real life. Name the park Millennial Mines. Nice. There you go. Um, but yeah, I'm currently working on a video about that. And why going into debt is not a problem. Especially in these rollercoaster tycoon 1 scenarios. Like, I'm paying 1% interest per year. Like, ooh, that's like 20 bucks a month or something like that. I don't know. Slightly more, like 24.40 a month. So it's basically nothing. Yeah, the interest in RST1 is always 1%. But even with a 5% interest rate, because you can just do the calculation, right? Um, you, you, you get a 5% interest rate over four years, then you pay back 20% of the loan. So if you borrow 25K and you pay back 20% of that over four years, you have 20K of free money. Like, there's no reason to not do that. Obviously, you shouldn't just take it out immediately. That's wasting money on interest. But as soon as you need the money and you're actually going to spend it, then, yeah, like, why not? There are a couple of scenarios that have, like, higher interest rates. So, it's not always a good idea. And even with a 20% interest rate. And a four-year goal. Which is, like, one of the worst-case scenarios possible. You still keep 20% of your loan at the end. 
How's it going, Marsha? I've been trying to keep up with your stream vault since I never seem to be around when you're streaming RST2. Well, you're around now. But uh, yeah, it's going good. Hope you're doing good as well. Generally, it's pretty easy to make money by investing the loan into stuff in your park. Yeah, exactly. Also, the interest rate is wrong. Like, the game says I'm paying 1% interest rate here, but I'm not. That's not true. The game is lying to you. Chris Sawyer is lying to you. For some odd reason, I really enjoy this RCT1 scenario. You mean Millennium Mind or the fact that, like, the scenario itself or the fact that I'm streaming it? Exit path. Ah, we don't need one, but let's do one anyway. But, yeah, that can go on your bingo card. Um, if anyone of you is playing bingo, Tom Scott, Speed Skating, uh, whatever else. Uh, Drowning, I guess, is probably on there. So maybe I should do that. So yeah, it's not actually 1%. And I'll show you. Drown the panda. That's not drowning a guest though. And bins everywhere. Who cares? Fair point. Where's the panda? There he is. Die. And they're gone. Let's see. We will be paying full interest on the 20k this month for the first time. And it will indeed be 2440 as I roughly calculated. Um, so I was right on that. Which means I'm amazing. Uh, let's build a twist here because that's totally a logical place. Maybe find the hulking guest who splits benches in half and drown them. The problem with that is that we don't have any of those at the moment. How long were you a RCT fan? I mean, I've, I've been playing for 21 years, roughly. So, uh, a while. Okay, this thing will make us mad money. Also, um, I should uh, be advertising. So, we have currently a loan of 20k, as you can see. So, 1% interest of that is 200 a year. There are 8 months in a year. Also, some of these do basically nothing because we don't charge for the entry. Um, there are 8 months in a year. So, we should pay 200 divided by 8 per month, which is 25. Now, as soon as the month ends... I'll show you that we didn't actually pay 25. You could just watch the video tomorrow, but I'm going to explain it to you now, because I find it very interesting. Well, no, not tomorrow. It will be next week. Tomorrow is a different video. And that's a haunted heist. Horror style. If the video needed to go live tomorrow, that would be very quick, because it's not finished yet. But luckily, I'm not that far behind. So, it's the 1st of June. We paid 24.40. Wait, that's not 25. So, why is it wrong? It's not very wrong, it's slightly wrong, and... It will always be slightly wrong. You will always pay slightly less than you should be paying. 
So, why is this? Well, basically, it's the fact that assembly, the programming language that RCT was written in, doesn't really do division by any number that is not a power of 2 very well. You'll notice that almost always, whenever I talk about a penalty to guest generation, a coaster, stats, whatever, it's almost always a division by a power of 2. Um, it's divided by 2, 4, 8, 16, all that kind of stuff. Um, and how this, how this is, and also, um, the game only deals with integers. So, how it is calculated, first it multiplies your loan with um, the percentage of interest. So that would be 20,000 times 1. Which is 20,000. Then, it, um, you need to divide by some factor to get the accurate payment. First, you need to divide by 100 because it's a percentage and that kind of stuff. Um, but you also need to divide by 32. Why 32? Well, there are 32 payments in a year. Because there are 8 months, 4 payments per year, so 32. So you need to divide by 3200. Problem is... 3200 is not a power of 2 and quite far removed from 2048 and 4096. And dividing by 3200, like, I'm no expert, but apparently that was not a viable option. So that's not what Chris Sawyer did. Now what he did was he multiplied by a number and divided by a bigger power of 2 to approximate a division by 3200. So what it currently does in the code is it multiplies the number by 5, which gives 100,000, and then it divides it by 2 to the power 14, which is 16,384, which is essentially a division by... 3200, 700, uh, 3276.8. So it's a division of slightly more than 3200. So in order to gain, to make the game faster, we have a slightly inaccurate loan interest. Also, is this going to make this? Name a ride of your choice. Well, what do you want to name it? This is all much too complicated for my liking. Well, you will be seeing it in a week again. But that time with accompanying... Um, numbers and text and whatever. Uh, let's see. And that one. But, what a perfect name. Okay, yeah, it indeed didn't make it. So let's go one hill earlier. Whee! Let's go in the ground. That's gotta be painful. And then go like that. And like that. Oh, it doesn't make it. All right. Let's see, I need to be, you know, ten and a half is perfect. Actually, no, I need to be one higher. In which case, I might, yeah, I should be able to do this. Yes, nice. 
So someone asked, what is this week's video about? Uh, it's about the reason why you place the entrance there and not there. Seriously, the difference is about a factor of two in throughput. On a wild mouse anyway. On this looping coaster it would make much less of a difference. Also, I, s I wonder what those kinds of lag spikes are from. Are they from certain plugins? Is the get is is it the game itself? It's not the auto save. Maybe it is the auto save, but it shouldn't be because usually, like, it doesn't happen every five minutes, and I do auto save every five minutes. I think you already explained it in one of your videos. You did I? I haven't made a video about it. Yeah, a bit of it, like. There are tons of things that I've already explained bits about. That I haven't made full videos about. Also, I think we might need more handymen. And... Can I... What if I... Nope, I'll put this on the other side then. Hang on. I actually started writing the script for this video a while ago. Like, back in 2021. But then I didn't like it. And then I shelved the idea. And I pulled it up again and rewrote the entire script. Well, the script wasn't finished. Oh yeah, the hairpin overview. But there I only showed it for the hairpin. I didn't do an analysis on like all kinds of rides and all the other factors that play into it and that the entrance, uh, that, the, that the exit doesn't matter, the exit placement. And it's also a thing, like people, if people are looking for it, they're not gonna click on a hairpin overview. But they are gonna click on a video with the exact title. Okay, that thing is... Oh, minimum waiting time. That's also incredibly important. For the throughput of that ride. Make the next ad campaign for a free ride on butt. That would be lovely. Love myself a free butt ride. Okay, let's connect this up. Oh, this is a bigger height difference than I thought it was. Uh, we can go this way. And... There we go. Now that's connected. Oh, we need to redo the ads. Why is everything brown? Uh, because brown is the best color in the game. Actually, there was a saying back on the Roller Coasters and Friends Discord. Um, it would be like, brown is not a theme. Brown would be a very common... Like, it would be very common to use a lot of the like, brown things. Brown supports. Like the mining theme, the log cabin things and that kind of stuff. People would just make everything brown. In heavily themed parks. But I like it. I mean, there's a reason it works. I mean, there's a reason it, it's used, and that is because it works. Do we have an info kiosk yet? Yes, we do! I'll immediately make that one higher before the right price manager or the right the price manager up, updates it. Here we go. 20 now and 70 for the park map. Perfect. This is ultimate laziness. I definitely think I was guilty of that a couple of times. Yeah, I don't really think I've done it, but I haven't done a lot of themed parks.
I wonder if it's possible to implement RCT3 style variable steepness stairs. Um, maybe at some point, not yet though. We do RCT2. Um, what is possible is they're currently working on getting pools from the like from the soaked expansion in RCT3 into RCT2, which would be a, a, a nice addition. What plugins do you usually use? Well, my most, uh, the one I use most often is a price manager. Uh, it used to be the right price manager, but a few hours ago I switched to the price manager when I found out that it existed because it's just better. Um, that's because it was developed later mostly, it's just the API's gotten better. Nothing against whoever made the right price manager plugin because it was still amazing. Um, let's see, I have Inspect Park Rating, which I use on occasion. Just, just to find something and how some things work sometimes. And like analysis of videos and when I need to know something. It, uh, some of the complicated things. Uh, peep Editor, I used actually... I This Peep Editor I actually used in the... In the Extreme Heights with One Ride video. There's one shot in the Extreme Heights with One Ride video which is impossible. Um, without the peep editor or some kind of other plugin which does a similar thing. Now I wonder if anyone... Now you, you didn't pay attention to it so you won't know by heart. But I wonder if anyone would ever be able to tell which shot that is. So there's one shot that concerns staff. Um, and you could pull up the video if you want. There's one shot that concerns staff in my Extreme Heights videos, uh, uh, video. Which does something that's usually impossible. Uh, thank you for the two months, Kivoy. And thank you for the follow, TMH, TMSZHD. Let's make these waterfalls. Um, but anyway, what you can do with the peep editor. For example, I can make this guy. Hang on. I need to click on one with this, I suppose. Where's the staff member? There he is. I can make him red. Now he is red. And I'll just say what it was. At the very last shot where I drown all the staff members. Uh, the handyman and mechanics all have different colors. That's usually not possible. Usually you can't make different. Or the, like one mechanic have this color. The other mechanic have that color. They're all the same color. And this one. How long did that one take? Uh, the challenge itself about two hours. Not very long. Um, I'm currently doing a challenge where which I'm about... Uh, let's quickly calculate. About 350 hours into. Uh, let's see. What else can we do? Where is this guy? I want to find him on the... No. S. Staff. It's, it's mechanic one. There we go. Let's see what else we can change about him. So... Whoops, he's now a security guard. Uh, now he's an entertainer. Now he's a guest with coffee. Um, that's wearing a purple shirt. Well, purple clothes. Now he is a guest with soup. Now he has his arms crossed. Uh, hang on. This should be easier to see. Now he's a snowman. And if we make him blue and then make it, I don't know. Let's see. Now he needs the toilet. 
And now he has a soda can. Now he has a pizza. You can also give him a big fat tentacle. There you go. Now he drinks out of a tentacle. What is nuggets? Oh, then he has nuggets. Um, let's pick him up. There you go. Big purple thing. Anyway, let's make him a mechanic again. There we go. He's still called... Oh, he's, a, he's an entertainer, but he has costume mechanic. Hang on, let's change that. Uh, click on you. No, click on a staff member. There we go. Mechanic. Costume mechanic. He's a bit slow for a mechanic. I don't know if he really works, but whatever. Uh, let's finish this right, and then I'll talk about other plugins. Then we go that way. And add a few more waterfalls. Why not? And go this way. Some rapids and a whirlpool. And a photo section. And bam. Bam! None of that. We got a classic mini roller coaster. How nice. Okay. Millennium Mines Mighty. I'm not going to call it Mighty Millennium Mines because now I can find it very easily. Just search for Millennium Mines. Though Mighty would be quite close to it. What's the plan to do the mighty? Nothing, it just sounds cool. Okay, what others do I have? I have bench warmer. Let's... There we go, now we have benches and bins everywhere. Very useful for the lazy person. Um, destroy path furniture. Now everything's destroyed. Let's fix all the vandalism. Um, explode guests. Which... Explodes a few guests. That's very nice. Uh, live right measurements. So if I click on this or select the right, like let's do looping coaster one. It has live right measurements, which also works on ghost trains while um, it's still testing, which is useful. So you can see, for example. If a ride that's half finished has excessive G-forces. Or anything like that. Let's go for the 12 weeks now. We have enough money. We also kind of have way too many guests for the park. But whatever. Okay, there we go. You can see that at this point in the ride. Uh, where is it? There it is. It has... Distance uh, it has traveled 411 meters. These are the maximum G's. These are the airtime. Well, you know, all the stats. And, you know, right time just goes up in seconds and all that kind of stuff. It's it's oca occasionally is useful. I've used it in one video, in the River Rapids video uh, overview, I believe. Then we have the Pride Manager, which I just explained. Scenery Manager, which is. Uh, complicated like it, like you can do a lot with it I barely know how it works it's just this there's so much to this I just used it for a few things where I need to copy needed to copy scenery but th th you can do a lot with it Ghost train. I mean like a ghost train that's on the test with the blue flag, not the ghost train right type. You can still do excessive g-force in the ghost train right type, but only uh, vertical, I suppose. 
Uh, positive vertical only, actually. Let's do a mine train in Millennium Mines. How appropriate. Millennial Mines. Oh yeah, it's called Millennial Mines now. You might still see a few guests exploding every now and then, because when they get selected to explode, but they're on a ride, they won't explode yet. They'll explode as soon as they go off the ride. Which is why sometimes you see exploding guests in my videos. Because I sometimes use the cheat if I want to have fewer guests in the park. Um, I'll just thin out the crowd by using the cheat. Uh, if I need that for a shot. But sometimes... That's whenever I re actually record the shot. Some guests get off a ride. And they still explode. Uh, this is what I meant with Ghost Train. As you see, if we do the live ride message... Did I just forget to put the chain lift on there? Well done, Marcel. Well done. There we go. Wait. Mine took... No, it's different. Mine train coaster one. There we go. Now we can see the uh, live ride stats. Which is neat. That's a very useful plugin, yes. I once saw someone, like, several months ago, that was playing Rollercoast Tycoon on Twitch. And they were building a coaster. And they didn't know they needed a chain lift. I was kind of shocked, because, like, does he not know how roller coasters work? It's not just not knowing how the game works, it's not knowing how real life works. Also, I didn't tell him. You know why I didn't tell him? Because as soon as I did, I probably would have been roped into staying there and telling him all kinds of things about the game. And I didn't want that because I didn't have the energy to do that. Someone else told him though. I remember doing that the first time I built a custom roller coaster. I figured it out afterwards real fast. Yeah, making the mistake is not a problem. Like, I just forgot as well. But, like, being surprised that it didn't go up the hill and then not knowing why. It's a bit... But, okay, yeah, I suppose it can happen. Not everyone knows how roller coasters work. I'm sure there is knowledge that people would be stunned that I don't have. That, like, most people would have that I'm ignorant about. So we shouldn't be too much on our high horse. I'd never stream RCT again if Marcel Voss came into my chat and told me how to play. Okay, so whenever I play Roller Coaster, uh, whenever I watch Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 streamers, um, I never immediately full on backseat. That, but if they say like, oh, guests aren't paying a lot for this or I'm not making a lot of money, Say something like that. I might give like a little tip. I won't go all nerdy. Because that's useless for people who, who aren't really into the game. But I might give a few tips here and there. Like for example you can probably charge more for your ride. I might say that. And if they ask for more help. Then I'll give anything they want. If I'm in the mood for that. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I just want to watch. Here's a knowledge tidbit for you. Litters of kittens can be made up of half-siblings with different dads. Female cats mate with many males in quick succession and any of them can father at least one kitten. I believe that humans can do that too. Like, if, you have, if a woman has sex with two men in a row really quick, it's, I think it's possible to get twins with two different dads. 
I'm not exactly sure. If I was an RCT streamer and Marcel came into my stream and asked, I'd be asked all kinds of questions. Um, I mean, yeah, Cody always asks a lot of questions. And I'm happy to oblige. I guess I came at the right time. Yes. It's always funny when you join in a stream and then you like hear someone talking about something completely that sounds completely weird out of context. We're already making a lot of money. Also, I don't think I've actually put down a cash machine yet. I just enabled them, so... Here we go. A toilet. One of those. One of those. So how's the 60,000 guests in the queue challenge going? Um, I haven't started building anything yet, but I have figured out the perfect ride to do it. So it's going well, I suppose. Okay, let's build a junior coaster. Right. No, that won't work. Okay, let's... Let's build this kind of backwards, because I want path here. So yeah, Cody made a video on... How many guests can you get into a queue line? Um, and he got stuck at like 64,000 and a bit, or 62,000, 60,000 something, I'm not sure. He didn't get to the maximum possible, and at that point, I was watching the video, and at that point I was like, oh, I should ask him if it's okay if I steal his idea and go for the maximum possible, because I'm sure I can figure out a way. Um, and literally two seconds later, he was like, I couldn't do it, but maybe Marshall could. So, I'm probably going, I'm going to try, and it's probably going to work. Considering how things work. Um, shall we go underground? Yeah, we shall go underground. I really like the way this looks when you're like on a hill like this and you lower one bit and you raise the other tile. That looks nice. This is a fast junior coaster. I was looking through GitHub for OpenRST2. I found an issue for making transport rides path findable. Yeah, it's not an easy thing. Oh, whoops. This needs to be... This also looks nice. But let's make it the same as the other one. Wait a minute. Why does... Like, why does this not work? Huh? Hang on, I'm confused. Oh, this one can be taller. Wait, does that mean that I lowered that one for nothing either? Like, why... The landscape is down by one. Yeah, but then this should just be on a different position, right? I, I suppose... I guess it would always be like this, but I guess not. I guess sometimes it's like that. Ha, huh, interesting. Um, also... I suppose let's make it like that. 
Thank you all for a lot. Anime Boy 104430 and Olivians. Ooh, we unlocked the Gokarts. Nice. And then that way, and now we're gonna go like that. And let's do a little helix. Actually, let's make it a double. And then go ass band and we're connected. And it doesn't make it. Not a problem, not a problem, not a problem. Booster time. No, not brakes, boosters. I wonder if that's enough. It almost made it, so it could be enough. But let's see if it is. Some of the go-kart cheats need to change. They don't need to change. They're fine as they are. Let's see, we got a little bit of extra speed. Uh. Uh. Nope. 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 Okay, you know what? What we're gonna do? Booster. 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 That should be enough. Since this is Millennial Minds, name any right student loans. Nice one. The boosters were only 14 miles per hour. Wait. How... They shouldn't be in miles per hour. Oh, it's 14. I thought you had, like, translated it. In your head. But you just misread kilometers for miles. That makes more sense. Okay, this is much better. Nice. Fourteen kilometers per hour is indeed not really fast enough for a ride like this. Then do that and that and then it's connected. Damn, we're making some good money. You know what, I'm too lazy for that. Bam! Much easier. Okay, we don't have a woody yet, do we? Where shall we build it? How about somewhere here so that we have an excuse to expand the path? Long station for lots of trains. A big fat, you know what? Uh, we can expand the station backwards. Longer! I want four trains. How many is this? Three or four? Three. Not in my house. Four trains, baby. Let's also make this a steep lift hill. Hell yeah. So someone started work today, well, orientation, I suppose, on a balance patch. Um, the per same person, actually, who made this ride manager, or the price manager. Um, they want to make a balance patch for Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, which, which eliminates pretty much all the exploits, or at least all the biggest ones. Now, 
that's not going to be a standard option. That's going to be like an opt-in extra thing if you want to. I am quite, I am vehemently against changing the standard behavior. And if they would, I would absolutely make a video about it, why it's a terrible idea. Um, I, you know, if they did a lot of things. But that's not what they're going to do. It's going to be an, like an opt-in thing. And for that, I think it's a really interesting project. Because um, at the moment, we've had a bit of a discussion about what kind of things are OP. Because, you know, I know a lot about that, so he's asked me. And, oh yeah, nice rendering glitch, isn't it? And the answer is basically everything is OP. Like, you start with, okay, ads are OP. Why are ads OP? Okay, that's because entry price is OP. Why is entry price OP? That's because ride value is OP. And park value is OP. It's like everything, in, like soft cast cap is OP. Uh, 20, euro, 20 euros umbrella are OP. Yeah, the tiny corkscrew and the 20 euro umbrellas are one of his two prime examples. And that's basically the thing. Whenever he gave something that I'm going to fix that, I'm like, okay, I'll just exploit it in this way. <laughs> Which is quite fun. But yeah, like I said, as, as, soon, as long as it is just a thing that is like a balanced patch that you can opt in to use, I will fully support it and I find it very interesting. Will OpenRST2 ever have wider curves? Like from the Giga and Twister coasters. Most coaster types actually have the wider curves. Like the Woody does. All the coaster types in this park, except the Wild Mouse, for obvious reasons, have access to the wider curves. So does the, min uh, so does the miniature railway. It's this very curve you want. I saw you like my art. Oh, that's you. It's great, yes. Well done. I showed it here on stream at the start. It's really good. And I'm flattered that I'm your internet hero. Why not all right? Why not Zoidberg? I don't mean the banks. I meant the dropping to the flattening track. Oh. Oh, those. Like the big flat to steep pieces. And steep to flat. Yeah, I mean, that, that adding those kinds of sprites is a lot of work. And not necessarily realistic and they won't wouldn't add too much necessarily like there's much more that needs to be done than what they can do because they have limited amount of time so they need to f choose what to focus on also um, I brought up there was a bug that's been in the game for like weeks um, that whenever you changed the scaling factor, it would, like, not scale properly. There would be a glitch and it would be very ugly. I showed it off on stream a few times and it was very annoying when I made videos whenever I changed the scaling factor, which I frequently do. Um, like, for example, I'm now, let's see, uh, this is 1. If I went to 1.25 and back to 1, this would be all wonky. It would all be, the text would all be ugly and rendered wrong. Um, and the same would be like my standard is now one and a half. Same would be if I would go to two, it will be wrong. And then I would need to go to the options. I would need to change drawing engine to software and then back to OpenGL. And then it would be fixed. It would be normal, like you're looking at now. All very annoying. Then I brought up the bug again a few days ago. And now it's been fixed, which is very nice. So now I can easily make videos. And I saw so many screenshots, like in my Discord server and stuff. 
of people also experiencing the bug. Your screenshot of text, like right stats and stuff, where the text looks so ugly. And I think it's unfortunate that it's been in the game for like a month or something like that. But at least it's fixed now. Ooh, new ads. So, we are nine months in. I believe we have three years. And we already have almost double the goal. So, uh, yeah, we're quite good. You know what? Let's do these as well. They still have an effect. It's just much smaller. I think you might win. Do you think? Ooh, that's a big coaster. Is that with the ATMs? Yeah, we have ATMs. It's like slightly cheaty. Now, hitting 1500 guests or 1600 guests in this time frame is incredibly easy, even if you don't have ATMs. Then you just don't overcharge for the rides. Do you know what song is 35, year old to 35 years old today? Well, some song from the summer of 1987. So, I don't know. Is it Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses? I know their first album released in 1987, so that's a possibility. How much money do the customers have when going into the park? It differs per scenario and it's always... Oh, actually, let's add a water splash. And it, there are always four different options. I'll have a look what it is in this scenario in a minute. It's a really famous song, Never Gonna Give You Up. Oh, the Rick Roll. Nice. Okay, let's properly test this. A bit off topic, but I was looking forward to travel either this year or next year, but COVID waves keep coming. Yeah, COVID is, has not quite disappeared yet it will disappear well it won't disappear at some point but at some point it will be treated more like flu it already sort of is a little and then it should have less of an impact Uh, hang on, where are we? See through rides. Ah, there. Oh, everything's in the way. Oh, we're way too low. Need to smoke more weed. And there we go. That's une connexion. Uh, that's no longer see, th see through, right? There we go. Nice. Thank you for the sub. Stroke my milkman, which is not at all creepy. Ah, nice big fat Woody. Let's make. Ooh, now that's a statement. Ooh. Oh, I like this. This is a good color combination. This is a really good color combination. This is like royal. This is proper royal. I like this. 
So it's... Um, what's it called? Dark purple. Then it's saturated red. And then it's black. On any other coaster, it would be the other way around. It would be first the red, then the purple, then the black. Let me show you what I mean. If I do the same thing... It's, it's still got the royal colors, but it's the other way around. You see, the, the most biggest thing is the purple. So if you swap these, it becomes like that. Let's give this thing its unique, own unique color. There we go, kind of the opposite. Now... Now... Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Um, let's also change these to yellow. Now, how about dark orange? Yeah, that's nice. Now, how much can we charge for this? 21. Now that's some good income right there. Okay, so I was gonna see how much the guests spawn with. Let's see. 75, 75, 75, 85. There are always four different options, always 10 away from each other. 65, 65. So the lowest. Either there's a 55 or there's a 95. And I wonder which one. 95. So the lowest is 65, which is actually quite a lot. That's really high. Usually it's between 30 and 60. That, is it a wooden coaster running three trains? No. It's running four. running the most trains possible. Okay, let's actually do a faster chain lift hill speed. So that it can process the trains even faster. And we can charge even more. Also, bench warmer. There we go. I love your giant Woody. Thank you very much. Okay, I could say if it was something very inappropriate. But I'm not going to. <laughs> um, let's build. Do we have unlocked? Yes, we have a go kart. Nice. I'm not going to build it here because height restrictions are going to be annoying. I'd love to see a purple car. We could do purple cars on this. This will probably have at least one purple car. I think you would need a bigger park, but you could build a woody that's shaped like a woody on the map. I have built shaped things before. Um, I've built a coaster in the shape of pie. And... The excitement, intensity, and nausea in that order were the first nine digits of pi of that coaster. Which is probably one of my best achievements ever. In Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. That sounds like it was hard. Uh, it was. It took quite a while. Hang on. I'll show you. I called it the Python. There we go. I don't know why it's called Python video. But this is what it looks like. And uh, yeah, it doesn't go very fast. But uh, here are the stats. Oh. Uh, apparently the excitement is not entirely accurate anymore. 
Hmm. Maybe something got slightly changed because scenery boost and stuff. I mean, I can just, if we fast forward a little bit, I should be able to fix that. There we go. It's going up. It's going up. Okay, and it's back. 3.14159265. Like, how would you make a change to the last digit of nausea? Airtime. The 26.52 seconds of airtime is very deliberate. So, you'll notice how this coaster... Um, has a lot of these things where it goes up via these staggered hills and then it goes down with a helix if i just there we go and then we follow the terrain and here it just has chain lift so it doesn't slow down too much it first just does the outline let's see yeah i think it is the full outline it does and then when it's done with the full outline, it fills it up. There we go. And then, as you see, it does a lot of these. Like, a lot of these. I'm glad my dick joke made this happen. I mean, your dick joke made me show this off. This I've already built this, of course, years ago. I tweeted this on Pi Day a few years ago as well. And it basically has a lot of these um, to get airtime, to get the nausea. And it has a stat penalty, uh, probably something like in the G-forces or something, or drop height, or I think drop height, yeah, for only 4 meters. I think the stat penalty is there. Um, maybe, I think it has 2 stat penalties actually, otherwise 3.2 intensity would be way too low. Um, so I think it's max cheese and drop height. I think that's 1.50 and something like 9. That's probably it. Um, and then I basically filled it in in the pie shape. Uh, also, it only works from this angle. Like, it still kind of works from this angle. And the other ones, it, it you can still see it's a pie. But it's not exactly... Like, it doesn't... It, it colors a bit outside of the lines. It's not as beautiful. But yeah, the reason that these can be quite tall, like these look, these almost go outside of the lines on the left. But if you follow the support, they're almost outside of the lines on the right. And that is why if you look at them from the other angle, they're way outside of the lines. So it only works from one angle. If you do no height changes, you can make it work from any angle, but no height changes makes the challenge pretty much impossible. You can also see there's like there's nothing here actually on this side. It's just all track that is higher that looks like it's there. What is this? This is a coaster in the shape of a pie and its stats are the first nine digits of pie. Um, it's sort of kind of the best thing I've ever done. Also, another thing I've showed off before, which is... Somewhere here. It's... Where is it? S N. It should be called Snoop Dogg the Right. Hmm. Hang on. Why is it not called Snoop Dogg the Right? Or it just called 420? Maybe it's just called 420. Oh yeah. There we go. I don't think it actually works i don't think it actually has 420 now the excitement you just ignore because um you can just increase that with scenery and path and stuff so assume the excitement to be 420 i've lost the actual finished product but i could easily recreate it um let's fix this so oh there it is this is a ride that has the number 420 in seven different stats. The excitement. Uh, if I would finish this. Again. Um, the intensity. The nausea. The ride time. The ride length. The positive vertical G's. 
and the total airtime in 4.20 seconds. Now this was a bloody nightmare to build. So I didn't record any of this because this was before I did YouTube. So basically first I just did this. A straightforward hill. Then we get there. That is the positive 4.2 G's. That one is easy because I just need to make sure that after this I don't go over 4.20. You know, you just alter this a little bit with, you know, make the track longer before the hill and stuff like that. That's easy. Then you break. And then you go down a little bit. You get, you know, you get some air time. Um, all very, you know, standard stuff, I suppose. Well, for me it was standard at the time anyway. And then I just kind of build random stuff to roughly get the stats right. And then there is a break. Actually, there's no break here. Well, there were breaks here earlier, but uh, drink some water. Well, thank you. I need it. I can only drink when you tell me to. There are breaks there, yes. So now... We are... Um, I wonder why the excitement keeps resetting. Oh, now this... Here the excitement didn't reset. I just didn't save the finished project product. So for some reason, I lost the save. So this is a, a, an older backup where I didn't quite finish it. Um, and now it's just a question of uh, of getting the right length to the right length um, and the right time. The right time you can do with like little breaks and stuff later on. Um, you can alter that. The right length you can also alter. And then the air time also needs to be like done precisely here with kind of breaks and stuff like that. And it was all very finicky. Because you alter one, you're most likely going to be altered another one as well. It used to be the year 420. Yeah, indeed. But I passed that. Um, it was very difficult. But after a very long time... It finally worked. And the thing is, if you have... You know your right time and your right length. Because you want them to be exactly that. So that means your average speed has to be a certain speed. Because that's how an average speed works. So I had to just alter the speed to get those two to work together. Um, I have a few other rides like this as well. Why not show them off? So one of the more difficult ones I've done... Uh, Stu challenged me to this and it was probably it, it, it took me maybe even longer than this one even though it only has three stats um, which is this one the stats of the coaster are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and it's a multi-dim and it took me so long to figure this out I tried all kinds of different coaster types and different designs it's not going very fast. I mean, it is here. Just basically, there's a lot of this. And it took me forever to build this, to figure it out. Because the nausea rating needs to be so incredibly high compared to everything else. And eventually, I abuse this because it gets the stat penalty. Oh, it gets recalculated here as well. So yeah, the stat... Uh, calculation has changed slightly. You see, it's once again slightly lower. Same happened on the Python. Um, if I would open this in the old version, it would stay the same. But yeah, this took me like probably like five or six hours to build. Well, not to build, but to design basically. Because this isn't, isn't exactly designed, but to come up with the idea and then work out a design and then tweak it and tweak it and tweak it again and tweak it some more and continue tweaking for like a billion more hours and then finally it works. Would it be easier to do the opposite? Well, yes. That's where we're going next. After that, I did the opposite. Um, loading times are long recently. Let's see. Then I did this. Which is the opposite, 9876543321. And I built this in 10 minutes. Like, the opposite was a million times easier. It's just, it's just a giga coaster. Like, 
it's just a giga coaster. There's nothing special about it. Because what you do is you get it roughly right. Then you get the nausea right. Then you um, alter the average speed to get the intensity right. And then you increase the excitement with scenery and stuff. That's just so much easier. It, the difference is massive. Because these are like fairly normal ride stats. Just like 963. But 147 um, aren't normal ride stats. Have you noticed that you build a coaster multiplayer that works and after a few hours the one right guaranteed crashes and doesn't make it through inversions? Not necessarily through the multiplayer, but I don't play a lot of multiplayer, so I don't know. Um, I've also done, which I actually made a video about before I even did YouTube. I just made a video to show it off to the community instead of showing it off to YouTube. Um, it's called the lucky coaster and it's still up on my channel it's a very old video and it's this it's a seven with a clover leaf on top of it and it has seven stats consist entirely of the number seven so it's 7.77, 7.77, 7.77, 77 kilometers per hour 77 minutes and seven seconds ride time a ride length of 7,777 meters and 7 drops. Uh, so it has 7 in 7 stats. And it's shaped like the number 7 with a clover leaf on top. It's entirely about luck, this coaster. <laughs> and it's not very exciting right here. So this was a bit more easy than some of the other ones because once again you have your airtime to fine to nausea the intensity i'm probably less good at it now because i haven't done stuff like this for a long while um and you know the intensity and stuff you can do that as well with drops and the like uh, and you know a lot of them I do here like f I, I, I can use the positive G's and stuff to fine tune stuff because they don't matter it's and the highest drop height as well and you know the lateral G's these breaks are very important uh, stuff like that is there a 6 version as well yes it's called the devil's coaster I made it I didn't make it but I made a video about it for my 666 subscriber special which was basically an excuse for me to make a video about that coaster. And I had just hit that subscriber number at the time. Um, granted, that's a very long time ago. Let's see. The Devil's Coaster. I need either version 1 or version 2. I'm not sure. Okay, version 2 is more exciting. This one isn't finished, I think. No. Okay, let's go version 2 then. Thank you for the 12 months, Jimmy. Yeah, it's already been a year. Thank you for all the support. There we go. This is what it looked like in the video. Um, it's only got in three stats. In only the EIN stats, but still. This was one of my... Actually, this was one of my very early projects. My very early built those stats. Like, the, one of the earliest that I ever did. Um, and it's got 6.66... In all the stats. And it's basically the nausea is controlled through the airtime by moving this inline twist back and forth because there's a break, I don't know, somewhere there, um, or underground probably. And so if you move it uh, a bit back, that means that the train is still going a little bit faster, so it's getting slightly less airtime. You move it this way, you get slightly more airtime, and that way you can vary the nausea without changing anything else. Um, and that's how I did that, and you know, use scenery and whatever to increase it. If you look underground, there's also a loop around the track, and yeah, I think you can see the brakes right there. Or is that the path under it? I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure how this all works anymore. I built these years ago. The excitement just live updated. Yeah, like I said, the, the, it's changed a little bit how it works. I'm not exactly sure when these changes happened, but this is years old. Uh, thank you for the 13 months, 733737. I appreciate that. 
It's kind of like Minecraft farms, right? And stuff like that. A Minecraft farm built in 1.5 might not work now anymore in 1.19. And it's similar with this. There, I can actually show you the very first time I ever did this. Um, if I can remember what it was called. Oh my god. Will I ever... All, did I call it something like all stats the same? Like, are all 999? Uh, hang on. Let me search for, in my save folder, for stats. Bugged at 9.99 all stats. Oh, it's under 9, not 999. There we go, it should be here. Yes. This is the first time. I would hope he has extra backup, backups of all of these. I do. On an external hard drive that's uh, in, in a cupboard. Um, this is the very first time I ever built a coaster with specific stats. Um, now the excitement will probably update again. But... It's got 9.99 in all three stats. And basically, I was on the Rollercoast Tycoon and Friends Discord server. And we were chatting about, I don't know, stuff. And I was learning about the game and I was showing off and all that kind of stuff. As I did at the time. I still do sometimes. Um, and someone mentioned casually, like, you should try to build a coaster with 9.99 in all stats. And I was like, huh. I should. They didn't... They weren't serious. But... I was. Uh, it took me like... Five hours to... Come up with this design and tweak it... A billion times and stuff like that. Um, and even eventually... I managed to do it. And it was 998 now. It's updated a little bit. A uh, newer version. But... Eventually I managed to do it. After many hours. Thank you for the prime sub. Wait, twice? That's a glitch, right? Only once. Oh, either way, thank you. TMS ZHC. Um, and then I did this, and then it opened it to... Like, all the kind of other things, and I did all the build those tests and stuff. I actually even have a folder with it, where I hosted games where people would need to build rides with... Um... Like for example, this is BTS six, and I need I re I came up with some stats, and people would need to build those stats and then get server points. Let's see the stats. Okay, I saw it, it was like seven point nine three, eight point eight three, nine point twenty. Not of any significance. I just came up with them, and then I think I built two different coasters. Yeah, I built two different coasters with the exact same stats. Or even three? No, just two. And then other people also did it. Like, for example, Stu, uh, Schubert is also very adapted. At some point, he, I think he became better than I was. He only did one. At later point, he always did the full three for the maximum amount of points. And others, like Gyrity, probably, um, only got, like, one stat right. Yeah, you see, he... He didn't get the exact stats, but he got the excitement right, which he still got some points for. The whole point system. Oh yeah, he's written down what you need here. And as you can see, it's, he only got the excitement. He was 100th off on the intensity and quite a lot off on the nausea. Um, but then if we... And let's see, go to build our stats, build set 9. Fewer and fewer people did it. Eventually I stopped hosting it because uh, I, I got bored with it. Did he build three of them here? No. I hosted more than nine, right? Let's see, if we go to BTS. Apparently I didn't. Unfortunately. Let's see, what does he have in five? Ah, he does have two here probably. Well, anyway, lots of people, well, a few people participated and it was really fun. Uh, but eventually I stopped. I also hosted a mini game, which was called 
GTS, which I also came up with. Um, and it was called Guess Those Stats instead of Build Those Stats. And I would build a ride. Let's see, this is GTS 27. Oh. Uh, I have no idea. Wait, what? No way. Hang on, what? This... I know this park, it's just... This is another park of mine with just a few rides deleted. I probably used this coaster, which was an older coaster I'd built before. That's so odd. Like, hang on, I'll show you what this is close... What this is the version of. If we go to... Um, what's it called? Oh, damn it, what did I call it? Oh yeah, Challenger Deep 2, this was called. Um, I believe. Check this out. See? It's the same park. You got the Brachista Crown Curves right here. You got those three coasters. And you got that thing, and you got that one. It's the same park, and this one is older. I apparently I just removed all the old coaster, all the other coasters, so probably so that I could get a clear picture of this one. Instead of just saving it and rebuilding it in a different park, um, I don't know. But yeah, this is one of my earliest test parks. I called them Challenger Deep at that point because you know I had challenges in them. This is like an early, like one of the longest 10 by 10 coasters. This was the Burkista Crown thing I built for the experiment, which uh, I made a video about. This was an early version that someone on Reddit made and I rebuilt. This was me trying to get as many tracks through um, through a big loop as possible, which is eight. This was me starting to build a very long 10 by 10 vertical drop coaster, but never finished. Why don't you do Dirkling's contests? Because those are more scenery focused off and I'm really interested in that. Um, I've competed like a few times. I made a cannon. I've made this. I see a break here and no break here. So it's probably to see like the effect of average speed or something like that. I don't remember. I've built that. Which is a very fast twister coaster. It goes 206 kilometers per hour. I've built this amazing coaster with 8.21 lateral G's. Um, so yeah, I've this is one of the older Challenger Deeps. There's also one just called Challenger Deep. Like this is Challenger Deep 2. I wonder what the original one is. I really wonder. Oh. Ah, this was back when I was doing high excitement records. This was around the time I got to like uh, 15, 16, something like that. But I obviously never finished it. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, this stuff. 10 over 2, which is what I called my experiments with getting a ride with over 10 excitement and the lowest intensity possible. And this one has 10.09 excitement and 1.6 intensity. Um, it was because someone uh, challenged it, challenged me, I believe. For some reason, it was Extreme that did it. You know, X7 numbers and whatever. You'll know him if you know him. You know who I mean. I believe he like, did it, but I'm not sure. And then I obviously had to beat him because at that time I had to beat everyone because I was the best player and all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, in hindsight, I kind of was, but I was still, you know, I was shoving it in everyone's faces, which was not very... Sometimes it, I, it was cool, and it improved me, it made me improve a lot, but always it might not have always been the most tactful. I might have been a bit boastful at times, a bit too boastful. Um, let's see, what's high income? Ah, I try to make the most money per hour on a single ride. This made a lot. I mean, 300k per hour. There's a throughput of 12,000 per hour. Who do you think will win the football women 
EM. Is that European Championships? Which doesn't... Hang on, are you... Isn't EM Norwegian for European Championships? Like, don't, don't, don't they call it like EM for European and VM for World? Anyway, I have no clue. I don't... Oh, that's not trying to... Oh, it's German. But I know it's also Norwegian. Um, I have no idea because I don't give a crap about football. So, I don't, I don't even know who's participating. Um, I didn't even know it was on. Let's see some other Challenger Deep. I hope you guys are enjoying it instead of the Millennium Mines. Okay, Challenger Deep D F G H D S F G S D F B V. Let's see what that's about. Ah yes, <laughs> four crashed coasters in the rain. <laughs> Okay, so I know exactly what I was trying to do. I was trying to see if scenery would block rides from crashing. And I have totally forgotten. So let's see if it does. Nope. It totally doesn't. <laughs> nice. <laughs> they launched at very high speeds. <laughs> Also, yes, some of these names aren't very descriptive. So, uh, let's go for the one below it. It's Challenger Deep Dvgzgagterfedvvvv. Sounds like I have a stroke or just speak Kazakh. Ah, this was another high excitement record. Uh, well, not record, but attempt before I discovered that giga coasters were the absolute way to go. Um, this I abandoned halfway through. These names are the names I sometimes give my save files. With save files, I am much more um, organized right now. Not so much with uh, track files, though. What's the one below it? That's quite short. Only six mashed keys. Ah, yes, a completely empty park. Because that makes sense to save. <laughs> okay, the next one. This is all very old stuff. Any Challenger Deep Park is at least... Like, probably at least four years old. Ah, yes. This is the very start of my park where I built a lot of coasters with over 10 excitement. Not the one I did on stream like a year ago. Um, but this is much older, when I didn't do all the coasters, but I did do a lot. And after I had done these two, the most iconic ones, I renamed it to Coasters with over 10 Excitement, if I believe. Yeah, there we go. And I continued building. There you go, there are the original two. And there are all the others, it's kind of a laggy mess. Uh, but yeah, these all have over 10 excitement. For many coaster types, this is the first time I ever reached over 10 excitement with them. Especially like the wild mice coaster types. I didn't even know it was possible. And also, here's things like the water coaster. And the spiral coaster, which all always looks ugly. And here you have stuff like the mini sus and steeplechase, which are just... Ridiculous if you want to get 10x hypement with them. It's just, it's just the, you know, same with like the mini coaster, the junior, and you have the Virginia reel here. Like, this is a Virginia reel with a 115 meter drop. <laughs> That's mental. That's absolutely mental. Hardline is missing. Uh, yes, it is, because it's not possible to do it with a hardline, only if you abuse glitches. But at this time, I didn't know about that glitch yet. Because like I said, this is about four years ago. Uh, probably even more. Probably before I started my YouTube channel. Probably like five years ago, maybe. Um, what other Challenger Deeps do we have? We have... Challenger Deep Hugged High. Let's see. 
Ah yes, this was I believe the highest excitement on a 10x10 10 10 coaster. 11.64 um, is probably still my record without abusing the hell out of airtime. Um, I quite like this coaster. It's a bit of a mess. But you get the idea, because first I want to get excitement from a tall drop. So it starts with quite a long drop. Well, it doesn't actually. It starts with all this kind of stuff. But eventually it has a very long drop. Because now it goes up again. Uh, it just does random stuff here. It's not very optimized. I promise you, eventually it will do a very long drop. So it gains a lot of speed and then, you know, you get excitement from that. Has it really been already four years since you started YouTube? Yes. There we go. This is the big drop. 167 kilometers per hour. I told you it was coming. And then we have a helix down. And that's pretty much it. You know, here are some other failed attempts. Well, not failed, just previous attempts. And there is also one. Is that that's like is that the same coaster? I think that's the same coaster. Uh, yeah, it looks the same, just from a different angle. Let's see what else we got. I have a lot of save files, more than two thousand. And yeah, I definitely have a backup of this. Actually, this, these save files, are the most important bit of data I own. You know, if you exclude, like, bank details and whatever. But if you just, like, exclude all, all, all that important legal stuff and stuff. This is the most important uh, data that I own. Why? Because all the other stuff, like, for example, all my videos and stuff. If I lose those, I can just download them from YouTube again. If I um, lose... Uh, or lots of other stuff, I can just get it again or recreate it again. It's not that much. If I lose this, I get a lot of, like, all my shots are from previous park. Well, some are, like, from scenarios and stuff, but a lot of my shots are from just existing parks. And it would take so much longer to create my videos if I hadn't didn't have those. Hope you have multiple backups. I don't have multiple backups i do want to create like a separate backup on the hard drive which i um leave at my parents place just in case my house burns down or something um but i haven't done that yet um but yeah this is very important data also what's your geography question jimmy Okay, what's this? This is excitement record. Well, attempt. So, not very interesting. Well, I mean, I suppose it's interesting for you guys to see all this stuff, but there's not much more. Ah, the maybe 17 was... Maybe 17. Maybe I got to 17 excitement with this one. And yes, I did. 17.71, which was at the time my all-time record. And I believe it's still my all-time record if you exclude abusing airtime. And airtime is a bug anyway. Yes, excluding airtime is a... You know, air, excitement from airtime is... The way it works in OpenRCT2 is a bug. It's a glitch. It, it works differently in vanilla. Um, the reason it hasn't been changed is because I haven't made a fuss about it yet. I might at some point. Um... So I believe technically this is my record. I don't know how exactly it works in Vanilla. So maybe it's possible to still abuse airtime to get it higher than this on coasters. But technically this is my all-time excitement record if you exclude any kind of bugs and glitches. Because as far as I know, this isn't glitched. You were right about the horrible roads in Belgium. Of course. Whenever you drive in Belgium, it's a free prostate massage. Here's my geography question. It should be easy. What's the third longest river in the world? Is it the Yangtze? I believe it's the Yangtze. After the Nile and Amazon. Or Amazon and Nile. Ah, Challenger Deep Malau. I couldn't even spell Lamau, right? Mathing lie ass off. 
Oh, this was the start of a couple of interesting dueling coasters, I suppose. Let's... All oh, right, you can't test anymore without finishing them. All right, you know what? Uh, show all operating modes. Hang on. I said show all operating modes. Boat hire mode test. Boat hire mode test. Uh, uh, whoops, the game. Hang on. It's, there we go. Now they're synchronized. Let's see how they do. Oh yeah, that was a very common technique of mine. Launch lift hill, that would stop halfway. Listen to that wonderful sound. Ooh, that's a nice synchronized corkscrew. And then they are mostly synchronized there. That's quite good still. And then it stops here because... Uh, oh yeah, it doesn't crash in boat higher mode. It just does that. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, ah, we have Challenger Deep. Sudif, 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 sudif. Dot SV6. <laughs> That's a total normal. Oh, I didn't use bull rush it. I used snowflakes here. Dang. Um, I think this was an excitement record attempt. Yeah, 12.95. That's quite a high excitement rating. What's got the other one? Ooh, that one's quite intense. That's just a supporting rise for excitement anyway. 12.95. That's, that, that's a good excitement rating. It's got a very tall drop. 184 meters. This is maybe the highest I've ever gotten on a hyper twister. Maybe I've gotten past it. I don't know. Thank you for the follow. Milky Weapon of Destruction. Good name. Good name. Okay, we're almost through all the Challenger Deeps. Um, let's see. Challenger Deep Super Splash Bota. Probably a typo. And it rains again. Go away. 17.17. 17. This was a previous excitement record. And... Challenger Deep XXXX. It sounds like a porno park. Let's see what it is. Ah, an excitement record. I, I have a lot of those from back in the day. 14.53 with 14.65 excitement. This is not an update. That's actually what they were. This will probably change in a few seconds. And this is how what my excitement ratings looked like back in the day. We go back and forth with 200 kilometers per hour at the bottom. And we have huge hills at the end to not get excessive lateral Gs. Oh yeah, this was the one massive hill to get a very... You know, we get the negative Gs here and we get a very high drop height and underground stuff. Top speed, all that kind of good stuff. What actually was Challenger Deep? It's the deepest point on Earth um, in the Mariana Trench. Like 10,998 meters, I believe, below sea level. It's somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. I believe not that far away from, like, the Philippines. Like, 2,000 kilometers away from there or something like that. It's a bit, like, on the left of the Pacific Ocean. And I like the name. Pacific. Wait, what did I say? Did I say Atlantic? At the first time? Uh, but I meant the Pacific, anyway. I prefer to call it the Silent Ocean, because that's literally what we call it in Dutch. Um, the Stille Oceaan. Or the Grote Oceaan, which means the Big Ocean. We also have a couple of other ones, like Challenger Deep 18. This is probably a ride with 18 excitement. Uh, yes. Well, not quite. I tried to get 18, but I didn't succeed. What else do we have? Five. 
Well, oh, is this 555? No, not 555. No, it's nothing. I was wondering if this was the time I built a coaster with 5.00 in all stats. Which I might have called 5.00. Uh, it's not called 5. That's a different one. Maybe it's called 500. Oh, 555 maybe. Let's see. Yes. Well, 498. But, you know, add a little bit of scenery and it's 5. Um, and then 5.00, 5.00. As long as the excitement is a bit below, but close, it's basically 5 because you just add scenery and it becomes 5 easily. So, you know, you build the coaster. The, you know what the challenge with this one was? You may notice that the excitement rating is only barely below 5. The challenge with this coaster was getting the excitement rating low enough. Um, without the set penalty, it's quite hard to get the excitement rating below 5 on this ride while also still getting 5 intensity and nausea. That was the challenge, actually. Um, and then I just, you know, made it have 5 intensity with fine-tuning. And then you have, like, just with the 666 coaster. You have this, which you move back and forth. Because, you know, it's it's still slowing down at this point. So you move it back and forth. And you get different amount of airtime, which changes the uh, blah, blah, nausea rating. And then, you know, you put some scenery to get to the correct excitement rating. It, it, it's all quite procedural. It's... There's a method to it. Hello, Marcel. You must have said it before, but where are you from? Love your content. Thank you. I'm from the Netherlands. Which has the best English accent in the world. Not, that's not true. Um, Finnish is probably the best accent. Do you guys want to see more old save files? Or would you like me to continue with the Mighty Millennium Mines? Would be funny if you made the most intense coaster ever, but there was a mod where you can where you can set it to custom stats. And guess would be like, I want to go on something more tr thrilling. You can technically modify it, but uh, it's like it changes back quickly. It's console commands and stuff. Okay, more people want to go back to mines. Then we do that. And there we are. All right, we were building a go-kart. Damn, we're rich. I'll pay back that loan. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little detour. Well, it wasn't exactly little. We're already two hours in. And lots of turns. Lots of uh, places where people can fall off the track and die. Which I would like to see, actually. There's a finite amount of space in the park. How many possible coasters are in the base game? Ugh, don't get me started. Just don't. Because it will eat up my life if I do. Well, like with the landscape one, that was already, and that one that was simple, and that already took a long time, and the video performed terribly. Like that video is probably one of the that video underperformed the most out of probably any video I did in the last, or maybe ever, except maybe one of the very first ones that I expected to perform better. I don't know why, but. Like how many different possible landscapes are there? It did so bad. It's really strange. And it's not like it picked up later over time. It just did bad. Maybe because it wasn't really about rides. It was just about the landscapes. Do you ever consider going on Patreon? I had a Patreon a while ago. But then I quit making videos because depression. Woo. Um... And then I also stopped the Patreon. Well, it wasn't exactly all depression, but that was... Not, not chronic, but I was, you know... Life wasn't going great at that point. Um, and I had a lot of time where I didn't make videos. And at some, I felt bad about taking people's money when I didn't make content. Because it was monthly and not per video. Um, so I shut down my Patreon. 
maybe instead of how many possible log plumes you can make, that would be at least an order of magnitude easier. Well, whatever I do, I would I would need to limit it to a certain park size because I think I think the problem is that it's impossible to do. I think that it's quite I think it's impossible to properly calculate how many possible log rooms you can do in like a 100 by 100 park. Um, just like it's impossible to calculate how many possible games of chess there are. There are estimations like 10 to the power 120. Number file made a video on that. But after every possible move you can do a lot of other moves. But what other moves you can do depends on the moves. You've depends on whatever moves gone before. Like you can't always you don't always have the same set of moves available. The thing with the landscape video is that all the tiles are independent. But on the log flume that's not the case. If you like for example if you have a station piece you can't follow that up with a gentle down sl downward slope. You need to have a level to gentle piece in between. And all kind of stuff like that. Um, and also, you can't always continue to go up. Hang on, what a... What? Huh? Oh. Uh, you can't always continue to go up because of support limit and stuff. And... It's... Or something else might... In, you know, depending on what you've built before... Your log flu might be in the way of wherever you're trying to build now. And that's also why I didn't include scenery. I did include a little section about it to show that that number will be even bigger. But the reason I didn't actually include scenery in the video about the landscapes is because that would be... That has the same problem. If you have a large scenery piece that influences what other scenery pieces can be built... And I'm not going to get into that. Because that's basically impossible. And you need to go all the estimations. And, you know, I'm not good enough at mathematics to be able to properly do that. I'm not a mathematician. I just do the math in my videos for fun. And it's quite simple math in... In, you know, in comparison to what proper mathematicians are doing. Thank you for the follow... Jadamalo and Xetami. So yeah, I've 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 I, I've thought about that before, like doing videos about how many things it is, how many things that, but it often gets very complicated and impossible. I mean, not technically impossible. There is a finite number of different possible log flumes that is theoretically possible to calculate. It might just not really be feasible to do it within our lifetime. Geopolitics questions, then. How many possible countries are there? I don't know. It, it very much depends on your definition. Like, you have some breakaway groups, like... South, like South Ossetia and stuff like that, and Abkhazia, which are both in Georgia. Like, you could consider those countries because they're sort of autonomous. Or do you consider Greenland a country, or Somaliland, or the Western, or like the Saharabi Republic, or whatever the exact name is, I always forget, which is in Western Sahara. Like, it's very difficult. So, some like Taiwan and Kosovo are a bit easier to understand, but those are difficult to even understand. So let alone make an informed opinion about. Thank you for the sub. Iwal Dodicaprio. I'd say as many countries as there are adult people being able to establish one. Technically, Anyone is physically able to establish a country. Well, maybe not someone with in a coma, but almost anyone would be able to. It just depends whether others recognize you. 
Like about half the countries on Earth recognize Kosovo. So it's sort of a country? The situations are complicated. The United Nations has 193 members, but you can't just rely on the United Nations because the Vatican is not part of the United Nations, but the Vatican is obviously a country. Literally everyone recognizes it. But for reasons, it's not a member of the United Nations. Uh, let's go bench warmer. There we go. When they establish a new one, does the old one cease to exist if no one is making it exist? Sort of. Like, it depends a bit. For example, when South Sudan broke away, Sudan kept existing. It just got a bit smaller. But there are other situations, and I can't really think of... Uh, an example right now, but maybe like with Czechoslovakia. I believe Czechoslovakia properly stopped existing. It got replaced by Czechia or Czech Republic and Slovakia. So that's not always the same. And that can also get very complicated. Same might be with Soviet Union, which stopped existing. It's not like Russia, it's not like that Russia lost some territory and continued existing. That the Soviet Union stopped existing and Russia and a lot of smaller states came into existence again. Because they were also in existence before the Soviet Union got created. A slide there. But we look at Korea as an example. Yes. Well, it was occupied by Japan for a long time as well. But yeah, if for if Th North and South Korea magically reunified now, which will probably not happen in the near future, but if it did, then both North and South Korea would cease to exist. And they would transform into one unified Korea. So yes, that would absolutely be the case. Oh, we're higher than that. Oh. Interesting. Welcome to your first stream, Rafarum. Some of the other Soviet republics left the USR after Russia. Yeah, that's true. Briefly, Kazakhstan was the entire USSR. Yeah, similar to what happened with the re reunification of Germany. Both East and West Germany are no more. Um, let's build a car ride. Right there. Similarly... In about three and a half years time, Belgium will cease to exist, as it will be annexed by the Netherlands. Um, I wasn't really supposed to tell you that, but I suppose you can have a little sneak peek of the future right there. Belgians rejoice. Do you really want to be... I mean, on, on, actually, it's not entirely true. It's only, only going to be Flanders. Um, Wallonia is actually going to be absorbed by Luxembourg. And Luxembourg will be finally become no longer a microstate. You're going on a limp there. <laughs> nice. Nobody, well, nobody wants Wallonia. What's wrong with Wallonia? As far as I know, it's the poorer part of Belgium. There's nothing inherently wrong. Like, sure, they speak French, but that's not inherently evil.
and let's remove that station piece. It ain't. Now, you know, the French, you might think they're evil, and I see why. But French itself is not inherently evil. It just got a little bit of a bad reputation. <laughs> Please, I am French. <laughs> I mean, I just said, you are not evil. That's a nice kill. Yeah, it is, isn't it? As someone who had French in school, understanding French in Bologna was an experience. Well, you know what's interesting? Um, so you have Wallonia and Flanders. Um, Wallonia speaks French, Flanders speaks uh, Dutch, or Flemish, uh, basically Dutch. And Brussels is basically a mix of the two, right? The interesting thing is that almost everyone in uh, Flanders uh, speaks French. Along to um, along to their Dutch, their native Dutch, but almost no one in Wallonia speaks Flemish or speaks Dutch. So it's a bit of a one-sided deal there. Oh yes, you know what we're gonna do here. We're gonna build six of these. Oh yeah, and a lot of countries have multiple national languages. Even the Netherlands does. Dutch and Frisian. Frisian is only spoken in Frisia, unsurprisingly, which is one of the 12 provinces. And most town signs like, you know, you're entering this town or city, actually have the name on it both in Dutch and in Frisian. So you get two different names. So if you're ever playing GeoGuessr from the Netherlands and you see two different names, um, then on, on a sign, you're likely in Frisia or you're in Limburg. Because Limburg also likes to do it, even though Limburgish is not an official language, it's still a popular dialect there. Um, so people often also use it. You know what, let's make this a stronger rainbow, let's make it 8. Aren't you forgetting Papiamento? I wasn't aware we had Papiamento was also a national language. The only different language location signs in Germany are Serbian in Eastern Germany. I've never heard of that. I wish you could make your rainbow wheel line as a blueprint. On one hand, yes. On the other hand, no. Because building this, like, if I would just plop this down, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting, I think. The process of building this is part of the rainbow ferris wheels. Like, sure, I could just plop down an entire park, but what's the fun in that? So now that I've built these, these, these fences here, I can just build the queue lines like this. Isn't that nice? And then I can delete the fences again. Now let's color them all. Start with a very dark red, because we have... One extra on either side. It's a Slavic language. Interesting. Nice perpendicular path building. That's a good phrase. Orange. And you will be yellow. And then the next one will be green. And then you will be blue. 
You will be purple. We almost have 100k in the bank. We're making so much money. And the last one will be dark purple. Oh yeah. That's a... Whoops. That's a good rainbow, isn't it? Utrecht seems really nice. Have you been there? Yes. Um, like, I've been to Utrecht several times. Um, you know, on the train station to transfer. But I don't really count it as going to Utrecht. But I've been, like, several times actually there. Once in the second class of high school. Um, once um, for a bachelor party. Once to go to the theater to see Jimmy Carr live. And he pronounced it Utrecht. Um, and maybe more, but uh, those are the three I can remember. The three times I've been to Utrecht. The most I saw of Utrecht was definitely on the school trip. We can uh, canoed through the canals, which was actually very nice. Mostly because it was with a girl I had with the girl I had a crush on. We were already friends. But yeah, that was nice. Okay, let's do some blue things. Do you think steep lift hills for more coasters will be a thing with open RCT2? Uh, maybe. I mean, you can already do it with cheats. So, it doesn't really need to be a thing. Friend zone. No, not really. I never asked her out or anything, but... You know, we were quite close in second class, and then... After that, we slowly just kind of drifted apart. We, we stayed friends, but... I mean, I never asked her out, so I wasn't friend zoned. Neither did she ask me. Uh, just a bit of research. Netherlands has four Bestuurstalen. Is that official language? Like, are Bestuurstalen official? Like, Bestuur in this... Uh, like, that would be kind... You would translate Bestuurstalen as government languages. Here, in this context. The old self-friend zone. I mean, is it really, if you're friends with someone you have a crush on and you just grow apart, is that a friend zone? I wouldn't consider that a friend zone. Like, n no. It was just a bit unfortunate. And also, the friend zone has such a negative connotation. Hang on. What's in the way? Oh, we are on there. I thought this was one tile to the side. Nether Saxon is an official non bestuur style. Limburg as a streek taal. And Yiddish and Romani as non territorial languages. It's a little incelish. What? Incelish? Incels hate women because they think women are obliged to give them attention. Incel is an insult. Like, it's not a good thing to be an incel. This was just a 13 year old boy just being friends with a girl he developed a crush on as they were being friends. Like, I didn't hate her. We stayed friends all throughout high school. Never spoke to her again after that, but that was just because, I don't know, neither of us made an effort. She went to an entirely different part of the country. And, you know, sometimes you don't see old friends after high school anymore. That's just how that happens. 
Student loans has broken down is a sentence some people might wish to hear. Yes. Oh, I think they meant the whole concept of friend zone. Uh, that makes a bit more sense, I suppose. Yeah, sort of. But obviously the friend zone is a thing. Because, you know, if I did ask her out and she did say, no, I'd rather be friends, then obviously that's not a nice feeling. So I see, I understand that the friend zone is a thing. And that's not necessarily insult. It's just... Having a bad feeling because someone you're friends with rejected you. It's not necessarily in Selish, but it, it you, you know, depending on how you handle it, it can be, I suppose. Geography question: Where is the friend zone? Oh, name a right of your choice. Did I miss that, or did I do it five minutes ago? Um. Hang on, where is that? And where I just called it Dark Red Ferris Wheel Derby, Se Derby Seeger? And did I read that correctly? Derby Seeger, yes. Alright. Is it in the Bermuda Triangle? Ah yes, the Bermuda the Bermuda Triangle. Another thing that every kid is obsessed with, well was obsessed with. Or at least knew about. Not of Sester, but knew about. Uh, Birdie Seeger. I think that was how you spelled it. But the thing that doesn't actually exist. Like, let me know. The YouTube channel Let Me Know has a good video on the Derby Seeger. Or, or the, on the Derby Seeger. On the Bermuda Triangle. And, like, it doesn't exist. It's not a thing. It's, sure, it's a place where lots of ships disappear, but it's also a place where there are lots of ships and planes. Like, it's just a heavily trafficked place. That's like saying that um, the US is incredibly unsafe because lots of people die of cancer there every year, so the cancer rate is higher there. No, it's not, it just has lots of people. Der oh, Derby Seeger... With a D. I, didn't I do that? A oh, birdie. Oh, I did it the other way around. I even checked and I didn't see the error. What does it mean? Also, lots of... According to Lemino at least. I'm basically parroting Lemino's video at the moment. Uh, lots of disappearances and mysteries that are attributed to the Bermuda Triangle. Didn't actually happen in the Bermuda Triangle. They're just, you know, sort of close enough, even when they might have been hundreds of kilometers away. Paranormal stuff is great for children. You know what's also great for children? Being afraid of quicksand. Was anyone else afraid of quicksand when they were young? Well, I wasn't really afraid, but I was aware of it. Like, I thought it was an actual thing that could be dangerous. I wasn't actively afraid of it, but... I've never heard of anyone actually being hurt by quicksand. I'm sure it has happened. Like, on occasion. But not a lot. Yeah, we were led to believe quicksand was everywhere. We were also led to believe that being on fire was a common thing. Like, stop, drop, and roll. That kind of stuff. Sure, it's good to know what to do if you're on fire. Because being on fire is generally not a very good thing. But it's not like it happens often. At least it shouldn't. If it do if you are on fire often, then I'd recommend uh, changing jobs or hobbies. Or stuff like spontaneous combustion. Oh yeah, I'm that, like that happened maybe once or twice in documented history or something, and now everyone's afraid of it. Good morning, Marshall. Stuck in the waiting room at the hospital. Well, I hope you're doing all right then. If not, I hope you're doing all right after you're out of the hospital. Let's do a little turntable. 
Where else in the world do people have earthquake drills? Oh yeah, we only had fire drills in school. And I suppose fire drills are a thing everywhere, because fire is a thing everywhere. We had like a fire drill once or twice a year, I'm not exactly sure, and that's it. And it was really simple, you, you know, you have just some alarm, and then you all walk out in orderly lines. And, you know, you go to the, to the sport fields. And then, you know, teachers count everyone and stuff. And it's a little rehearsal. We have fire and tornado drills. Yeah, extreme weather isn't really a thing here in the Netherlands. Um, so, we didn't have, like, tornado drills or whatever other weather drills, like flood drills. I don't know if they exist, but we didn't have any of that. Derby Seeger is a football team in Germany who won and the, is when a football team in Germany won against their closest rival. Oh, nice. Thank you for the follow. Bogol111. We had a school shooting drill t once or twice in Germany. Really? I didn't know they were a thing outside of the US. Extreme weather will be a thing in the Netherlands in the not so distant future. Yeah, it might be. Although, if our if our dikes hold, it won't be that extreme. Because, sure, weather will be extreme, but it won't be, like, that big a change. Like, sure, the heat waves will become more intense, and that will be deadly. But, so, like, a heat wave drill isn't a thing. And, sure, we might get a few more drastic storms, but extreme storms. But they won't be, like... They won't be like Hurricane Sandy-like anywhere near. There's like, I saw a comment on Reddit a few days ago that said that like in a few decades, the UK will probably be the new Spain for holiday destinations and stuff. Like, no it won't. Barcelona has an average summer high of 28 degrees. Brighton has an average summer high of 18 degrees. We are expected to have like a 2 or 3 degree average rise in the next 100 years, something like that. Not a 10 degree rise, it's not going to be that big of a difference. Of course the extremes will be more extreme, and don't get me wrong, climate change is a bad thing for humans. But it's not like the UK will have 45 degrees every day for 10 days in a row or something like Spain will have. It's luckily not that bad. Back for my first day at the new job. Oh, how's it going? Thank you for the bits. I mean, the UK already has palms in some part of the country. Yeah, but you don't need 45 degrees to get palms. What's your favorite holiday destination? I don't go on holidays that often anymore but I don't really have a favorite holiday destination when I, mean, I would say Iceland but I've only been there once not like I go there often that would probably be like my favorite place I've ever been to lots of management of wealth lots of paperwork well I hope you like paperwork then you probably do because you got this job on purpose But if climate change is this a big... What if climate change is deploy a big thermometer to sell more thermometers? That could be. <laughs> Do you ever use no entry signs? Sometimes when I have really long exit lines. I'm actually currently using it. I'm on a... I'm currently on a very long scenario playthrough. Um, I'm about 350 hours into it, and it makes use of a no-entry sign. Uh, bench warmer. It's currently running in the background as well. Let's build another one of these.
Do you think it would be a challenge to clear a scenario without elevated paths under or paths under tunnels? Um, MT airfield? No, because there's no elevation there. Uh, but one like this? No, not really. It wouldn't really be much of a challenge. Because you get plenty of like these kinds of hills where you can build paths over. That's fine. Oh, we got a candy floss style stall. Interesting. Let's build a little food court here. Uh, on the. Hang on, is that connected? No, it's not in the right place. Alright, I'll just build it there. And an info kiosk. There we go. Heartland coaster. How many possible Heartland coasters can you make on flat ground? That's still like an immense amount. Because you can go back and forth and it still depends on what you've done before. Like, it's still a lot. I still don't think it's doable to calculate that. Do I have one of every ride now? I haven't quite unlocked everything, but I have one of every ride I have unlocked. Actually, no, I don't. I don't have the water rides. How about with no queue lines? Uh, a park like this? Yeah, that's doable. So I think they should all be doable. Yeah, probably. I think they're all doable. Park's getting a bit full in it. Okay, you know what? Let's just go like this. A little bit easier. Go like that. This is a bit of a longer chain lift with lots of turns and twists. And we'll bang their head. Because <laughs> I'm a cruel man. I'm a very cruel man. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that this just works. Like, they're just fine. If you just make it a tunnel. They'll bang their head on the ceiling. It's fine. Wouldn't paper right scenarios be more difficult with no queue line? Yeah, but you don't need a lot of money to run a park. Um, now, what will be difficult is any scenarios which which require you to make a certain amount of money per month. Yeah, those might be very tricky if you don't have queue lines. Um, but that's, that just makes sense, because it means that, you know, guests can't go on the rides, which is kind of a thing they need to do in order to pay for them. Ooh, the ads are over. We're making close to 40k a month. Make the concussionator. That's a good name. I wonder how Doofenshmirtz comes up with them. Does he have a naminator? That gives him names. wonder if we still have enough speed for that. Let's take a look at the Luxies. I, don't, I, don't, I generally avoid long straight bits. Okay, actually, I think we might need to do that. Do we have a further section? We do not. Alright, let's... Oh, oops. Let's properly test it. About one. Away! And how fast does it go? Almost 60. That's a good speed. And it still makes that. And it will go much faster. Okay, so it, went, it, it had a speed of 12 kilometers per hour on top of that last hill. Now I'm going to build a queue line and open it and blah blah blah. Um, let's see what the difference is. Let's see how much faster it goes 
with a guest in it. The difference will be quite magnificent at that point in the ride. So here it is. Let's see the first one that has guests in it. Which will be this one. Or not quite? Nope, not yet. That one then? Yes. Okay, how fast will this go? Color a ride. Color the dinghy slide yellow and pink. Oh god, I'll get to that after this. So let's see. How fast does it still go? Furious one went 12. This one goes 24. That's double the speed. That's 12 kilometers per hour faster still. That's how big of a difference the guests make on a dinghy slide. Especially later on in the track. Ooh, now that is bright. And it's raining, so we're selling a lot of umbrellas. Can you do a monorail that goes over the entire park with as many tops as possible? No! I don't have a monorail available. Or have I just unlocked it? Nope, I haven't. We have a reverse free fall coaster. If you have a long track, a dinghy with a guest should run into an empty dinghy in front. Oh yes, that might happen here, actually. Uh, we'll see. If it does and someone dies... Uh, uh, li that, that's life, you know. You can die. It, it, it's a thing that happens. It's not my fault. It's maybe not... Well, maybe it's my fault. It's not my problem. If guests die... Time to... Nope. Mm, nope. Ah. It's not a very big one, but... It's what you do with it. That matters. Okay, how far up does it go? Oh, that's a bit taller than it needs to be. That's fine. Connected to there. Awesome. Now let's get rid of the salmon pink. Ah, much better. Let's make this. Nope. Yeah, that's not a bad color. Oh, thank you to the, for the gifted subs. Sub. Oni Coyote. Vandalism? You say vandalism? Do we have vandalisms? Let's see if we have vandalisms. Oh. Uh, yes, we do. We still have a great park rating, though. We had a little dip there. We, we only have eight hand demon. Do you find it strange if someone falls asleep to your vault? No, because I fall asleep to other people's to other people's YouTube videos too. Sometimes, sometimes not, but sometimes I do. So uh, I get it, and you're also not the first one who tells me that they do. I wish mechanics could fix vandalism. Yeah, that would be nice. They can actually in Zoo Tycoon. There. Your mechanics, well, they're not called mechanics, I believe, but, you know, the mechanic guys fix broken fences. Not exactly vandalism, they just rust over time and break down. Uh, let's see, we need bench warmer. I suppose it's vandalism by the animals who can break through weak fences. So you, you could call that vandalism. That it makes security guards even more useless. They're already useless. Unless you have not enough handymen. It's either Marshall or Dirkling's videos for me to fall asleep to. Yeah, Dirkling doesn't do live streams, but he does do much longer videos than I do.
then again, his videos are quicker to make. I could never like release two videos a week of 20 or 30 minutes in my style. That's just, it's just not how it works. And neither could he if he did that. And there. The RCT cash register sound is great sleep ASMR. Should I just upload 10 hours of just the cash sound? ka ching ka ching ka ching, ka -ching 10 hours long. Or should I upload a video of 10 hours of me imitating the cash sound? Now that would be a viral hit. Yes, well I'm not gonna do it. By the way, um, now that I'm thinking about viral hits, one of the reasons I'm going really hard on GeoGuessr and I want the world record on the Netherlands map is because I searched on YouTube for fast Netherlands time on the Netherlands map and I couldn't find any. So I thought, oh, that's a bit of an, like, a thing I can capitalize on because no one has done it yet. Um, makes sense, right? If I'm the first one to do it, people will look for it to see mine if I do a really fast time, which I have done now. Um, but it turns out I was wrong. The current world record is 221, and there's actually a video of it on YouTube. The reason I didn't find it at first, I only find it, found it yesterday, is because it has 82 views. It's been online for a few months, and it only has 82 views. So it's not as in demand as I thought it was. I'm still very happy I got the world record. I mean, I still really like GeoGuessr. So I'm, you know, I still think I, I still like the video. But I thought much more people would be searching for that. Because GeoGuessr is a more popular game than Rollercoaster Tycoon, for example. But apparently they don't. Or he just never got the exposure he got. I really wonder, because obviously the video I uploaded for GeoGuessr did terribly. Obviously it did, because it's not what most of my audience subscribed for. It still did relatively well, considering it's... A game in an entirely different genre. But yeah, it did bad. About two and a half times less, well, three times less than the average video gets. Um, but I wonder how well it's gonna do over the long time. It might do really well, or it might not do well if the other, if the actual world record video is any kind of indication. I know Geotips runs the balanced Netherlands map for speedrunning. Yeah, the other guy also has the world record for balanced Netherlands, I believe, with 130. I found that video on his channel as well. Um, I, I, I haven't really looked into it too much, but I believe balanced Netherlands is Netherlands with less Amsterdam and more of other cities, and probably also fewer tiny rural roads. Because I've had a few runs today where I had a great first round, like sub 20 seconds. And then I just got dropped on a random tiny ass dead straight country road in the middle of some fields with zero reference points. Like, that's just an immediate really run, run ending location. Oh, you still got enough roads in the Achterhoek. It's not just the Achterhoek though, like... There's in Brabant, you have, the, you have those roads everywhere. Like Frisia and Groningen have a lot of them. There's especially a part in Groningen between like Midwolda and Hongerige Wolf. Um, which are just. or like Woldendorp and Mid. Woldendorp and Hongerigdorp, something like that. It's like a bit below Delft Cell. And there's just. Nothing there. Like you can be spawned on some death trade road, and the first village will be like five kilometers away or something like that. And I know, like in Nevada, you have places where the nearest road is five kilometers away. I know Americans, but in the Netherlands, the nearest village being five kilometers away is a lot. And five. 
I mean, we're basically done at this point. I've built all the rights I can. We have 200k in the bank. It's absolutely ridiculous. We have 2,700 guests. We're completely destroying this park. I think posting a video like that really depends on the other content you put. Like if PewDiePie, for example, posts a similar video, even with an awful time, he'll get a ton of views. I mean, yeah, but that's why my video on my 346 currently has like 12,500 views. And the video by the other guy only has 82. That's because I already have 100k subs. Um... But I wonder, you know, how it's going to do over time is really a good indication. If after a year it's still stuck at 15,000 or 20,000, then it didn't do that well. But if it gets picked up and in a year it has 100,000, then that is an indication that it's a searched topic and that people actually do find and like the video. I love seeing the video pop up, got me back into it again. Yeah, thank you. And a lot of people say they loved it, and even though it got, you know, a lot less views than usual, which was to be expected, it still got like a 98.5% like ratio, which is a little bit worse than usual for me. Usually I have like 99.5%. But that's still quite good. So that was a bit higher than I expected. So the people who clicked on it did really like it. Also, I, I edited down the volume just after I saw my time. You may have noticed that the background music got quieter there. It's because I was really loud and it was actually too loud. And the people who were there will know that, who were there in the stream on Sunday. But uh, people who weren't might not know that. Yeah, it's getting quite dense. I mean, we're nearing the end of the scenario. And this is not going to be like one of those dense parks. But I'm just basically mindlessly building rides while I'm talking. At the moment. Lol, let's build the right here and connect it. It's built a little bit higher, actually. No, that doesn't quite work. Okay, you know what? How about there? <laughs> Perfect location for a merry-go-round. Ah, that connects perfectly, actually. Oh, but that doesn't. Let's move that over. Name a ride. What do you want to name and what do you want to name it? The blue Ferris wheel strobe test red. What? I, do I don't get that, but okay. Like, what? Stroop is Dutch for syrup. Test is test. And red is, well, red. It's blue. Uh, je ne sais pas. Uh, je ne comprendre pas. Uh, ich verstehe das nicht. Uh, I don't think I know another language. Well, ik begrijp dat niet. That's just Dutch. Strobe waffle is syrup waffle. Waffle. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a waffle with syrup in the middle. It's a name in this case. What do you mean a name? A name of what? Your park has received an award for being the park with the best staff. I, I did just hire 100 entertainers. That's great timing. Ooh, I got a swinging inverter ship. Neat. Wait, did I miss the col- No, I didn't miss. That was the water slide. The test comes down to writing the word blue in red. Oh, the Stroop test. I've heard of that. Yes. Okay, so for people who don't know... 
Yeah, it's a test where the color word names are written in different colors. And you either have to say the colors they're written in or the words themselves. I think the colors they're written in. Because um, just reading the words itself is probably on the easy side. Fire all the stuff. Well, that was predictable. Uh, oops. There we go. You guys are so predictable. Go. A little bit that way, and that way, and that way, and I like that Q line. It's funny how I had completely forgotten about the Stroop test, but as soon as you explained it, I was like, yeah, I know about that. It unlocked the memory from somewhere deep inside my little monkey brain. And that's another one. It's being rude because it has its back to the path. First wheel 5 has broken down. How unfortunate. We have almost 3,000 guests. We're making 45k a month. This is just... <laughs> it's like an exponential graph. Park value just goes up steadily. Goes down every time a big ride ages. Weekly profit. I mean, whenever we build a ride, it's kind of low. But it's still a steady rise. Let's look at some stats. Hang on. Did I see my... I thought I saw minus 40k an hour. No, it's just unpopular. Oh, and it's not 200 meters long, so it's got terrible stats. 60 nice guy an hour. Nice. Yeah, I knew the wooden coaster would make a lot of money. Then I have the looping coaster. 48k an hour. The log flume. The corkscrew coaster. Inverted coaster. Mine train coaster. Student lungs. <laughs> and then the river rapids. Total customers. Looping coaster. I mean, we also built it a bit earlier than the wooden coaster, so that makes sense. We have customers per hour now. Oh, looping coaster still has more. Okay, it's just more popular, I suppose. It's also closer to the center of the park, which may mean it's more easily accessible. Um, running cost. The reverse re Whoa, that's expensive. I didn't know they were so expensive to run. I mean, ultimately, running cost is not a lot. This is like 400 bucks a year. But still, like, if you run this for four years, it just becomes 1600 more expensive, which is like 20% of the original construction cost. So it's not much. But still, that's expensive running costs. Q length dinghy slide. Huh. It also doesn't have the greatest throughput because it's a dinghy slide. But still. Also, not a lot of long queue lines. Like, the go-kart has the longest, because it's a go-kart. In terms of queue time. It's only 12 minutes, though. What's the most favorite ride? The looping coaster, of course. Drinks of water. Thank you, I needed it. Ooh, we have passed 3,000 guests in a little over two years. And this, my friends, is why Rollercoaster Tycoon is easy if you know how it works and you use a little plugins. <laughs> you, you know, you abuse plugins a little and it becomes very easy. Highest excitement, not even 8. 7.81. Highest intensity, 9.75. <laughs> the butt has the highest intensity. Hang on. Does it have excessive g-forces? No, it's just scary. Obviously, because it has a lot of positive g force because 90 kilometers per hour. It's a very intense butt. <laughs> Why is that so funny? Ooh, the marketing campaigns have finished. Why are butts funny? And that. 
and that. And let's see, what's the most nauseating ride? Inverted Coaster 1. Well, that makes sense. Because it's an invert, they tend to do that. I think we've gotten all the stats. I mean, we have a few of these stats, like... Drinkstall makes a lot of money. Drinkstall always make uh, quite a bit of money. Info kiosks make some good money. Toilets, 540 an hour. Oh, and 30 cents. It's got almost 2,000 customers an hour. I do only have two toilets in the park. So I suppose that makes sense. Damn, 2,000 people an hour in the same toilet. That's, uh... It's a busy bathroom. You constantly see guests going in and out. Must be, uh... Quite cramped in there. Talking about a disgusting state of my path. Let's have a look, see, shall we? Ooh. Yes. Yeah, it's quite disgusting, isn't it? Let's hire some handyman to deal with that. I think 300 will do nicely. Some mechanics. And some entertainers to cheer up the guests. Let's do 200. There we go. Is there a limit how many guests can be in the toilet at once? Nope. There is not. You can have an orgy of 10,000 guests in a toilet and it will be fun. And it will fit magically. 10,000 guests can fit in this building at the same time. Now let's see how this stuff impacts our weekly profit. Because <laughs> it should... Uh, it should not be kind to our weekly profit. Not at all. I wonder how expensive it will be. We have experimented with this by making all the guests have their maximum toilet need. Yeah, I've done that before. It's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Ooh, this costs me 30k a month almost. Whoops. <laughs> I still make a profit though, because I was making like 40k a month in profit. So I can afford this stuff. Okay, let's fast forward a bit. And let's see what our next weekly profit is. Yeah, it goes down and it should stay down now. Oh, we have 300k in the bank. Neat. Let's see. Almost no. Yeah, it stays down now. We are suddenly not making as much money, but we are still profiting. Despite the incredibly expensive staff team we have at the moment. We still made almost 20k. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, our weekly profit is down quite a bit. But it's still fairly high though. Huh. Have we unlocked anything? Suspended swinging coaster? I can't be bothered building one of those. Mini sus, also not. I think I'm going to uh, bring the stream to an end. Let's enable early scenario completion. Wait until the day has finished. And then we will beat the scenario. With about 3,500 guests about half a year before the actual deadline. There we go. Le Marcel. And that's the scenario. Honestly, I love a stream like this. It just, it's quite generic. 
But it's great. Just building a fun park, showing off a few old projects and stuff. I had a really good time tonight. That sounds like something you would say to a loved one. <laughs> well, I love you all. So I do say it to a loved one. But different kind of love, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you all very much for being here. Let's see who, uh, who I can find to raid. Okay, no one who I follow is currently streaming Rollercoaster Tycoon. Buddhist Metal, I've raided them before. Okay, this is a French streamer. Ashikun, they're playing Rollercoaster Tycoon Classic because why not? That's literally their streaming title. Let's see. Their chat is for everyone. Good. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I had a good time. Hope you did too. Hope you liked all the old stuff that I showed off. Thank you for the follow. Tulak. And I'll send you off to another streamer. Uh, give them all the love and the hype and the whatever you're doing it right. You know the deal. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow on the main channel. And I'll see you Sunday on the live stream. La bye bye. Good night. Sleep tight.